Yeah, so hello everybody. <clears throat> My name is Bob Harris. I'm the academic vice president of uh, doctoral education here at KI and I also head the international uh, committee. Annika. Hello. Uh, my name is Annika Wernersson and I am uh, academic vice president of higher education. So first we'd like to welcome you to Karolinska Institutet and to Sweden if, it's, uh, if you're new to the area. Uh, I've been living here for 26 years. I'm an Englishman from the start, although you might not hear that anymore. But that would be quite important to get a, I'm still a foreigner, so we are, we're all foreigners here together uh, in Sweden. So what we want to do is to do the following. If I just start to share my screen with you. So we want to try and help you navigate uh, through the, the COVID uh, situation uh, at, uh, in Sweden and at Karolinska and what's been done and what's being done and, and what one could think about uh, in, in this. So what we'll go through is to give you a brief uh, status report on where we are uh, nationally and also interestingly to do to see what's happening internationally as well many of you are from countries which maybe have experienced a different uh, a different uh, experience of the covid so it would be important to discuss a little bit uh, what one should and shouldn't do uh, but we do some type of uh, comparison there and then i'll talk a little bit about the swedish culture and attitude to authorities it's quite important to understand where you are and how people think uh, that might help you understand the situation and then we'll go through in a bit more detail what you can expect will happen on the ki campus during the autumn and then we'll open up for the the questions that you've asked and any new questions that will come out so i hope that sounds like a, a decent plan so if I, uh, and of course, why are we doing this? Uh, we want to make you feel welcome. We want to make you feel cared for. It's very important that one is not overly stressed by the situation. So this is one way to ally any fears you might have. Uh, as I already mentioned, it's quite important to try and have the best possibility to understand how the Swedish uh, response has been. So we put it into that context. And also most importantly, to understand what is expected of you and your personal responsibility uh, in this situation. So let's start. So the current situation in Sweden, uh, this is graphs taken from the public health authority on the left here, showing the number of cases uh, since March. We had our first case in March up until the present time. And, and this is the, the mortality rate. <clears throat> Very important if you look at these graphs to actually see the numbers. Uh, we have in total just less than 6,000 people who have died in Sweden. And as you can see, we had uh, an in incident uh, started in March. Um, and uh, the death rate started there. And even though we had a little bit of a resurgence in number of cases, you can see that the death rate has actually gone down. Uh, and at the moment, there's one or two people who have been sick for some time uh, who, are, who are dying not every single day. <clears throat> so basically, I spoke to the, the doctor who's in charge of the intensive uh, care units in, in Stockholm today, and there are no patients in the intensive care, no COVID patients in the intensive care units in anywhere in Stockholm at the moment. And the number of new cases that are coming in needing hospitalization is basically nothing anymore. So uh, we're very much hoping that uh, the very worst uh, is over. Um, in other parts of Sweden, then there are still active cases, but, uh, and there's still active cases you can see here in Stockholm, but the worst seems to definitely be be over as far as we can as far as we can see. Um, <clears throat> there's been a heated debate about the Swedish strategy and the Swedish strategy it's been different from in other countries where there's been a very hard lockdown. We haven't had an official lockdown but the public health authority has said please work from home if you can. If it's not necessary to travel on public transport don't do it and in Sweden then people follow the, 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 what the authorities say. So most people have stayed at home. There have probably been about 80% of people have been working from home and not coming out as much as possible, especially the older generation have been self-isolating. So it's not been forced to do. There's not been a shutdown of shops and restaurants. Uh, many of them have chosen to do that. There are a few that have stayed open. I've had very few guests, but it's not been a completely uh, uh, cessation of the, the that industry as has happened in other countries uh, and the people are starting to come back a little bit more uh, 
Uh, we have a system where if you use public transport, you need to have a, a card uh, that you buy to, 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 and you need to show that every time you take a journey on the, on the underground or the trains or the buses. And at the moment, on the buses, you don't need to do that. Uh, this is because you normally enter the bus past the driver. And in order to protect the drivers, then you don't do that. You enter in the middle of the bus. So, so the drivers are protected from, from near contact with passengers and so there's no need to actually use the buses and this has been a great thing but it costs the government of course a lot of money the swedish healthcare system has coped with the crisis we had to expand the number of uh, uh, capabilities for for intensive care places but they've not been overrun so we managed to cope with it the stockholm area has been the worst uh, uh, affected as you can imagine because we have most people living here uh, and in the city of Gothenburg which is the second biggest city as well but in both cases they've actually been able to, to cope with the number of cases just about but what we have seen is that our, our, our old people's homes have not really been uh, up to scratch and so we've had uh, uh, a lot more uh, incidents there but that's been basically how it's been. So there's not been any rule that says you have to uh, stay at home, but many people have done that and continue to do that at any rate. And that's very much the Swedish mentality. And people will take their responsibility, they will believe the authorities, if the authorities say do this, then people will do what, what they were told. If they say don't do this, then they won't do that either. Uh, and we can get back to that question when it comes to the use of face marks and, and so on. But we have the, the, the general feeling in Sweden is that if the authorities make a decision, they make the decision that should be best for us. And, and that way it's not, uh, uh, people will follow it and, and people have done that. And of course the general recommendations have been very good. Now if you do look at other countries where they've had uh, other things, and again, you can't really compare countries because the way that the reporting done is different, the way the testing is done is different, the way the reporting of the deaths is done is different, but at any rate, I just show this because I, uh, I think it's quite interesting. And Spain, which had a very, very early incidence, had a very hard lockdown, and now they have a second wave, uh, which you can see in numbers of cases. Uh, and in the, the, the death rate that comes up here. If you remember the death rate in Sweden was just one or two, here you have 20 or 30 people uh, currently uh, a daily. And the same in Germany. In Germany they've had a very different reporting system when it comes to death rate, but they had an early wave, they had a very extreme lockdown, and now that they've actually lightened up on the lockdown, they also have a second wave. And again, these bars here represent 10 to 20 people, not just one or two. So even though I said at the start one shouldn't compare countries, what it seems is that the Swedish system actually seems to be, our curve seems to have gone down almost to, to zero. And as long as it continues like that, then we don't get the second wave, then it look, seems as though it, uh, the strategy seems to be working at any rate. Uh, of course, the people who have died, it's uh, uh, sad for them. Uh, but uh, if people don't uh, keep uh, succumbing to the infection, then we'd be, we'd be pleased. So the general recommendations are the same as everywhere else, I'm sure. Stay at home if you're ill, that's the most important. If you have any type of symptoms, you should not be out in the public place. You keep physical distancing as much as possible and you be aware of personal hygiene. This is very much your hands, that you learn to keep your hands, uh, uh, that you, you, you learn to remember that your hands are dirty until you clean them. So uh, frequent washing, use of uh, hand alcohol, uh, any time that you're out, if you don't need to hold on to bars and buses, then, then don't do it and so on. And this has been the recommendations and they continue to be the rec recommendations. And these recommendations in themselves seem to have had some type of effect. Now I hand over to Annika to talk about uh, what's been done uh, more in the, for the education. Oh, thank you, Bob. Uh, so I will tell you a little more about uh, the situation for the education. And uh, as you know, probably we had all the education digital during the spring, but since late May, we got the information from the government that from June 15, we were allowed to have campus-based teaching. But of course, we should follow the recommendation by the public health agency. Uh, and uh, this autumn, we have decided that most theoretical education will, continu uh, will continue to be remotely, which enables us to give campus-based teaching for, for priority groups and activities so that we can follow the recommendations. Next, please. So we have decided that these uh, groups should be prioritized and these activities. 
and it includes the following practical modules and skills training or practical examinations because they are of course difficult to have in uh, in a digital form new uh, first or second cycle students we want new students to be able to come to the campus and connect to ki examination not the uh, possible at a distance and um, also, if we have to prioritize, uh, we will prioritize examination the final year of a program. But we, the idea is to have most of the examination at the campus. Uh, also, we, we are prioritizing study programs uh, which are held in English, international programs. And that is, of course, because we want you to uh, we have more close contact to KI and we want you to be safe so we, so we want to give you more space at the campus and also thesis defenses uh, they are also prioritized next please and we are following the recommendation from the public health agency but we also we have added some recommendations and that is to use face masks in certain educational situation where you not where you cannot keep the distance that we need to keep and that could that uh, could include clinical practical skills training uh, uh, laboratory work and during dissections that are examples when it can be difficult to keep the distance next please however it's very important that these face masks they shouldn't be used as an alternative to other precautions such as keeping physical distance or to stay at home if you feel ill uh, and that is of course very important and we have no recommendation to wear face masks on campus in general and that is because we think you should follow the rules. You shouldn't be at the campus if you feel sick and you should keep the physical distance. And it's very much based on that everyone takes his or her own responsibility to do this. And uh, we have also, um, of course, instruction. There should be uh, instruction how to use the face mask and also where you can, uh, where you can leave the face mask when the, you have had your education situation or education yes and also as bob said uh, if you have mild symptoms you should stay at home that is extremely important you shouldn't come to campus if you feel sick and you should stay at home as long as you feel unwell and you should wait at least 48 hours uh, after recovery before you, you come to campus again and if someone in your household has symptoms of COVID-19, you should stay at home if you have non-compulsory teaching, such as lectures, group work, or self-studies. So, and what about testing? Uh, well, you, uh, you can be tested. Uh, if you have symptoms of COVID-19, you can make an appointment for, to test for virus, PCR test. This is free of charge, and that includes also those of you who don't have a social security number and it doesn't say that, that here but you should uh, make an appointment via the website 1177 so it, it's actually the same procedure as if you want to test for antibodies you should go via the website 1177 to make an appointment and if you should test for uh, antibodies, you, you um, must have been asymptomatic for more than 14 days because otherwise that's not, you cannot be sure that the antibodies has developed or can be detected. And also if you have, sorry, just if you could go back, because you can also get a referral from the student health, uh, health center at KI. So you can contact also them. Yeah, now they can take the next. Uh, and what about uh, the, the syllabus? Uh, well, uh, uh, it should be followed. Uh, the syllabus should be followed. Uh, and that means that the existing examination forms and learning ob objectives should be, um, uh, should be given. 
but sometimes uh, the course directors have to mod uh, might need to modify this uh, if if uh, when it, they do this in practice and then you should follow the instructions from the course directors yes next please it is also extremely important that you keep updated and we continuously update our recommendations. So it's extremely important that you check KI's website and you have the link here. And uh, so daily, I think you should go in there and see are there any news that I need to know. And also you will need, uh, you will get uh, student news, news, uh, student NIT, a newsletter which you will have via email where you where you can receive also important information but that it comes regularly and in between there might be new instructions so please go into the website daily and also there are recommendations and different signs at the campus and of course you should follow those uh, recommendations also and here you can see the, this is a picture of the website where you can see all the instructions and you can find it on the first page when you go, go into our KI website. So it's, it should be easy to find. The next. And uh, as Jelaine said, the, a lot of questions has been sent to us before the seminar and or this webinar and uh, there are very much many details in those questions and we will uh, look through them carefully and we will use them to to update our information on the website so you might not get uh, all the answers here today but uh, we will use them so they are important for us because we will use them to to give you better information uh, so next please and if you have questions or you need clarifications, I want to give you an overview where you should uh, put your, the, or who you should contact, I should say. So if you have questions regarding your classes, contact your course director. They can give you the answers. I, and we have the course directors are in contact with uh, people, the people who are responsible for education at each department. And I have uh, meetings with them every week or every second week where I get the information if there are general things that we need to know and we need to update on the web website. So please contact your, your course director if you have questions regarding your classes. And if you have thoughts about education and things you think should be improved, it, uh, then you, it's important that you talk to the student union, Medicinska Föreningen, MF, or Odontologiska Föreningen, OF, or if you have a student representative. Please uh, talk to them, and I have weekly meetings with them. Uh, also, Bob has meetings with, with the student union, so we get information from them, and they, they can help us also to give you better information on the website. And if you have questions about testing, you can talk to Student Health Center, Student Health Center, and you can find it on the KI website. The next. And if you have questions regarding travel restrictions, you can visit Foreign Ministry. If you have questions regarding study break, you can contact your stu student counselor. And if you have questions regarding your mental health during the pandemic, you might have questions that, um, that you, you don't feel well, you feel it's difficult to stay at home much, and, uh, or you have other questions, please contact the uh, Student Health Center before you, you, it gets worse. So we want to help you. So please contact us. Yes. So okay. th th those were the general uh, uh, places where you can, uh, which who you can contact when if you have different questions. Thank so you. before we get into the question and answer, we can maybe it also might be interesting to to explain what the Karolinska has done as a medical university, of course. Then we we've been heavily involved in the the national response to 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 the COVID pandemic. Many of our uh, our doctors have, have gone in to to 
uh, work in the intensive care units. We have researchers that have cha changed the, the focus of their labs to set up uh, analysis methods. So we're one of the testing places that are doing PCR analysis, antibody ana analysis. There are vaccines being produced here. There are nanobodies which have just been produced, which are neutralizing the virus, which have been made by KI researchers. So there's been a lot of research intensive and a lot of healthcare uh, uh, input as well. And, and that we feel is our duty as a medical university. The Karolinska leadership has formed uh, crisis groups. The leadership group has a special COVID meeting weekly to discuss developments where both Annika and I uh, are present. There's a resource group, uh, a pandemic preparation group. So we're taking a responsibility to try and make sure there are, there are, there's a special group which is responsible for dealing with issues about mental health and so on. So the, 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 it all sounds rather uh, complex. Uh, the, this is a new virus to the world. Uh, it's been the first pandemic that we've had that's really been a global phenomenon uh, and we've had to adapt. And I think the adaptations have been rather good, uh, although they're not optimal and people are, are rather hoping that we get back to normality soon. One important thing to remember is that as the youngest generation, you, you are the least affected. It's not to say that you're not affected, but uh, you're actually uh, in the lowest risk group. And what one's had to do, and, and the reason what we, why we've taken the recommendations we have, is to make sure that the risk assessments are done. The risk assessments are done on the workplaces, the risk assessments are done in the educational rooms, and the, the risk assessments are done about who should be here and who shouldn't be. Now, as international students who might not have the same extensive uh, network of friends and acquaintances, that's why your education on campus has been prioritized. That's why we invite you to be here, but we invite you to be here under very strict circumstances so that you, so that you can feel safe. That's one of the reasons that we offer the possibility of having uh, using face protection in crowded situations, just to make sure that you feel extra safe. And that's the, the reasoning behind these things. So it's not to say that it's nothing to be worried about, but it's also to say it's nothing to be completely petrified about either, and somewhere in the, middle, in, in the middle. But the most important thing is that you take your responsibility and that you follow the recommendations. The Karolinska follows the recommendations of the public health organization, and then we extend them uh, a little bit more. There are many workplaces where it's impossible, they uh, made it impossible by the arrangements of the rooms that one can be overcrowded, that's excellent. But if those situations aren't in place, for example, lunch queues, you don't need to be standing close to people in lunch queues. That's one occasion where it's up to your common sense, personal responsibility to, to keep physical distancing and so on, okay. But um, we're doing what we can uh, we've, we've adapted uh, a lot of, uh, of what we've been doing uh, and up until now the results have been rather good. Uh, it is difficult doing uh, online teaching. It means that you have to have an additional amount of focus. It's also a lot of extra work for the teachers to adapt to doing online teaching. I teach a lot and I, I love to be face to face with people. So it's, uh, for many of us, it's a new skill set that we have to develop. So please be patient if you don't think everything is optimal as well. But also take your part by being involved if you have a hybrid teaching and you're doing online teaching as well. Okay, that's all I think that we want to say. Anika, do you have anything more or should we get into questions? No, I just want to add and say that we really want you to feel welcome here and that you should feel secure. And, and if you have questions, please ask them and we will help you the best way we can. And not only to us, but to the course directors, to uh, student representatives and so on. So, and I, maybe also we should say that you, these, the presentation will be available so you can go back and see whom you should contact and, and so on. Thank you. Okay, if we go and start to go on the questions and answers. Mm -hmm. The protocol for when you're getting sick is basically you should stay at home and see what happens. There is no, there is no official protocol for, for being tested. Uh, as soon as you start to experience symptoms, then you should stay at home and see what happens. It's additionally complicated now because we start to move into the normal flu se season. 
uh, and, and anyone that's showing symptoms of irritation in the nose, then everyone's going to think, oh, this is COVID, but it could actually be the start of the flu as well. So one needs to see what type of symptoms you have and how they, how they develop. But you can be tested, of course. You, if you want to, you can be tested. Yeah. Mm. And uh, yeah. can I take the next one? It, yeah. it says here, if we don't have, uh, uh, it says that there's no uniform risk assessment guideline. Uh, but there is, we have a template for risk assessment for, for the teachers and the course directors. Uh, so we have that actually. So every course director should do a, a risk assessment um, before they start to, to teach at campus. You should be asymptomatic when you go to do the testing. Uh, Antibodies, yeah. Yeah, if the classes are, are made available online, then of course you can take part in the classes. And, and in certain situations, then there'll be hybrid classes where one can, I guess one can, uh, th there'll be the, that possibility for both. Otherwise, if you miss classes, I guess there's uh, ways of uh, getting the information, Annika. So. Yeah, I, I mean, many of, uh, of the teachers, in many courses, uh, all the uh, lectures uh, feel mad, is uh, recorded so that they be put it online so that you can follow it. But, but uh, if, uh, if you have uh, questions about that, please contact your course director and, and discuss with them so that they can, can help you if you feel that there are problems. Very, the different courses do, do this in different ways. But please contact your course director. Uh, there have been lots of surveys going out to students. Uh, uh, the, 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 one, the most recent one has been about, uh, there's, there's been one going out to doctoral students about time, how their, their PhD studies have been affected by uh, COVID. There's been another one recently, it's just finished uh, yesterday, about uh, the feelings of mental health uh, and stress. Um, one about uh, quality of teaching, Annika? Yeah, we have actually, we are just... Uh, uh, summarizing, we have had uh, questions uh, the spring, uh, during the spring, uh, questions after finalizing every course. So we are actually right now summarizing those from the students and also the experiences from the teachers. So we will, we will be, uh, make it public when we have uh, analyzed it and that will be quite soon. So we, and we still, we, we will ask questions also during autumn after every single course. That is a recommendation to our course directors. Uh, the quarantine laws, I don't think there are any, any strict uh, laws, but if you, if you would arrive and not be feeling well, then, then you should stay at home. If you arrive and you're in perfect health, then, then, then there's no reason for you, you not to be out and about. And as long as you follow the, the normal recommendations, then, then it's not uh, the same as in other countries where you're put into quarantine automatically. Making masks mandatory is uh, there's a lot of lo there's a lot of uh, different opinions about whether face masks should be worn or not. The public health authority uh, does not say that it's necessary. Uh, what Karolinska has done is to say in certain situations, again, purely for the reason for for one, they've been shown in many studies to actually reduce infection spread, but secondly, to make people feel more safe if they need to be in situations where you can't keep physical distance. So there will not be any mandatory uh, uh, necessity unless the situation would change, unless we'd get a complete uh, upsurge in, in the infection. In Stockholm, as I said at the start, it's not to say the infection is over, don't uh, get me wrong on that, but it's very much at a reduced level where we don't see the, the same numbers of newly infected people or severely sick people either. So we need to just wait and see what happens in, in during the next month. 
of course, if things would change, then the rec recommendations might change. And that's why, as Annika has already said, it's very important that you check into the homepage daily and just see if there's anything new. If there will come new recommendations and they'd be made mandatory, then, then, then you'll see it there and you'll be informed. We, as we said in the beginning, there has been quite a lot of questions sent to us, but hopefully most of them has been answered by the presentation and, and about, uh, after these uh, questions and, and answer sections. So, but if we find other things that we haven't answered, we will try to do that uh, by updating our information on the website. So we will go through this, your questions and, and carefully and give you the answers. That is the idea. The question come there about uh, <clears throat> if you got symptoms, why shouldn't you be tested? <clears throat> of course, with the, 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 the most important aspect of this virus, which is very interesting from a, from a scientific point of view, is that you can be asymptomatic but infected and actually spreading the virus. So just the fact that you show some symptoms, it, uh, it doesn't necessarily mean that you have COVID. And because you're not expressing uh, symptoms, it doesn't mean that you're, you're, you haven't got COVID either. So there is no uh, automatic uh, testing as soon as you develop any symptoms. It's more a question of waiting to see whether you have mild symptoms that are over in a day or so. It could be just a, a normal uh, uh, nasal irritation, uh, a, a normal cold, or if the symptoms uh, continue. As Annika already said, that you can be tested as soon as, as, soon as uh, uh, you can, at any rate. And there are also questions here about if you are asymptomatic. Uh, but uh, I mean, we know that if, if the, most, the highest risk if you is if you have symptoms, then you have the most amount of virus that can infect uh, people near, near you. But of course, that is the idea that you should keep the distance and you should clean your hands and you should be responsible for how that is to to minimize uh, the risk of that asymptomatic people uh, uh, spread in the infection to other people so the risk is is higher when you have an active disease with symptoms and you have more virus but that is the idea and that is how it has worked here and you saw the, it, that is the way we have done it here in Sweden during the spring and summer. Just a qualification statement about face mask. If you want to wear a face mask on campus, then no one is going to stop you doing it. Oh. It's a personal decision. And if that's what you want to do and you have your own face mask, then of course you can use it in, to any extent that you wish to. It's not that you're forbidden of doing it. The important thing is that in situations, where we consider it a higher risk because of the fact that you can't observe the physical distancing rule, then we will provide face masks for people that don't have them. But it's not to say that you, you, you can't wear one if, if you would feel happier doing that. And the, the sort of the, the, the level of the, the quality of the face masks vary depending on, uh, you know, it's uh, the, the, the very disposable ones should be just that disposable. It's also, if you have one which is more robust, then of course it should be cleaned or dried out or sprayed with alcohol between uses as well. But these are general recommendations that, uh, uh, that you'll find elsewhere in the world where face masks are used. It's, again, it's quite common sense, I think, for how you should deal with these things. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> My, I can tell you what I do personally because I've been taking the the, the underground bus and uh, the underground train and the, and the, the bus every single day basically since March, so that puts me at risk. I'm 54 years old, so I'm not so old that I'm in the highest risk zone, but I'm a lot older than you guys. But what do I do? My consideration is whenever I'm outside of my office here, my hands are dirty, so I've learned not to touch my face. I've learned to do that by holding my hands together when I'm in public transport. I've learned that I don't need to hold on to the bars with my hands. I can hold on with the, with the middle of my arm if I need to have support. And I've learned that uh, anything I need to touch, 
whether it be the coffee uh, apparatus here uh, where I'm working or, or the, the, if I'm paying for something I need to press in my number, my hands are dirty until I've disinfected them. So I carry a hand disinfectant with me or I have a disinfectant in my room and as soon as I come in, I wash my hands and I, I use alcohol on them. And that's my personal way. So you need to be aware of what you're doing with your hands. Uh, and, and that's again why if you have an irritation in your nose, then, then don't put yourself in the situation where you're gonna need to be able to touch yourself or learn to touch yourself in a different way that doesn't involve your fingers. So a lot of this is common sense and just good hygiene practice. I think one of the good things that's gonna come out for this is that we have a lot better personal hygiene and people are a lot more aware of this. And I would imagine that all the stomach flus that usually go around in the winter time will be very much reduced because everyone has got used to, uh, to the personal hygiene uh, measures. So I think that that's, uh, that that's uh, an obvious thing that we can all do to, to, make each, uh, to make ourselves and other people safe. There are no more questions or? Yeah, there's one. Is it possible to provide courses and exams online for non-EU okay. students who are unable to reach Sweden? People uh, have visas. <clears throat> No, actually, we, we uh, it depends. I mean, we have some courses, uh, at, at least uh, in part uh, online, but uh, the examination we want most of the time to have at campus. Um, so it depends on, on the course and the program, but most of it, we keep the international ones we have here based at campus. When it comes to getting tested, then, uh, then we refer you already to student health. I think that's where you can get help uh, in getting tested should you, should you need it. Uh, it's not been perfect. Uh, these type of things are not perfect. The testing itself isn't perfect either uh, in its uh, methodology. That's one of the biggest, biggest uh, challenges with this uh, particular infection. That is the same everywhere, I think so. So Bita, you missed the beginning. Basically, if you start to develop any type of ill health symptoms, you should stay at home. And then you should be, be sure that you, you see what happens. If you develop more severe symptoms, then you need to get help. But you should not, any form of ill health, then you should not be coming to campus. That's the general, general rule. If any of you have kids who are in daycare, then uh, you'll find that as soon as, you know, small kids are often getting uh, uh, small colds and snuffles and things, as soon as they show any symptoms, they're, they're gone from there. And this is one way that one can uh, reduce the risks of, of potentially putting the infection around. But as I said, we have a lot of people who are not shown any symptoms have turned out to be antibody positive. We have other people that have had symptoms that have turned out to be antibody negative. So the, the, the testing is not as important as, as actually taking the responsibility and knowing yourself what the status of your health is and acting accordingly. Yeah, I think interaction with other parts of society, if it's high school students or whatever, you're interacting on your way to work with lots of other people in the, in the, in the population. So, um, and I think that, uh, uh, as I say, the younger generation have, have, uh, have shown to be carriers, but not have been shown to be as highly infected. So I wouldn't be uh, overly worried about the interacting with people who are not, uh, and you'll be interacting with people, as I say, coming to and from uh, campus. We had questions here about uh, antibody testing at the airport. That is not, that is not done. Uh, and if you have severe symptoms, what shall you do? Then, then you should contact uh, the website 1177 and you should uh, be able to get care. Uh, so, and if you have questions, you can also, also during daytime contact a student health center uh, so that you should uh, get care. And um, 
It says also the Jan Jakob GJ restaurant seems to also to be used by high school students from a nearby school, and that I got that information. And uh, we have uh, talked to um, uh, what fast is Bob. What is that? Those who are responsible for for uh, this the the, the campus. Uh, yeah, so they should they should take extra care to to. Uh, um, ask the people to keep a distance that is all this, always we have to t tell the people also the high school students they should keep a distance they should uh, receive the same information as you but if it doesn't work please tell your course directors and we will um, uh, discuss this again and discuss it with the, the leaders at, at KI and also FASTESA Delium. And it, there's another question about uh, if you can have, as an international student, if you can get antibody testing. Yeah, you can, and you will have the information in the PowerPoint presentation, so you can find it if you missed it in our presentation. Okay, are there any more questions coming up that you want to, to raise? Otherwise, we should maybe just re recapitulate uh, what we've said. Uh, other than welcoming, welcoming you to Sweden and to KI, then um, we follow the, the regulations of the health ministry, which is stay at home if you feel in the least bit sick, keep physical distancing as much as you can, and be well aware of your personal hygiene practices. Those are the three cardinal rules. When you're here, we prioritize your teaching online at, at Karolinska. Uh, we think that's important that, you, that you're here and we facilitate that by giving extra measures such as provision of, of face masks in situations where we deem it's in, important to have. You're allowed to wear a mas face mask as much as you want, but the important thing is that you take your responsibility. That's what we expect of you. What you can expect of us is that we make sure that people understand what their responsibility is. And the most important thing there is to check the information which is posted on the homepage about regulations. If there's any change from public health authority, then we will change the regulations there. If the Karolinska decides to change any of their extra recommendations, that will be posted there. So that's your best way of getting information. And otherwise you've been given links in this presentation to other places where you can get help if it's uh, visa uh, questions, and especially if it's ill health or mental health questions. Okay, Annika, do we need to say anything more? No, I think you summarized it very nice. Yeah. But uh, please uh, don't hesitate to get in touch if we can be of any more service. I hope this has been useful for you all to try and uh, uh, Make you make you feel uh, that you're aware of the situation. As uh, as I said, the other important message was that in Sweden, one believes in the authorities. We don't believe that they lie to us. We believe they make decisions based on evidence and based on what's best for us. If the Karolinska chooses to extend those recommendations, it, we still believe in the authorities. But we just want to show that we care about you a little bit extra because you're you're all very special to us. Okay. And with that, then we close the session. Thank you very much for your attendance. I hope it's been useful. Uh, maybe there will be a formal way of giving feedback about uh, that. Uh, and we wish you both, Annika and I, uh, Jelaine, a very happy evening. Bye. Bye.